thank you very much for, for joining. Um, guys, I'm super excited to talk to you guys. I know you guys are working uh, in, on a project and we're gonna talk about that in a moment. But at first I would like to ask you some questions individually, kind of to, for people to uh, know a little better you as an artist, as, an, as a photographer. So I would like to begin with uh, Tiara. Tiara, um, your work is amazing. I, I really uh, like, you know, how you capture people. Is very, uh, your pictures I have, I think have a lot of uh, movement. They're very dynamic uh, and they're very uh, raw. Um, and I think your style has moved into something more editorial, I think. I don't know what you think about it, but uh, that's, that's how I see it. So do you, um, I would like to understand better, you know, your, your background. So did you begin as a boudoir photographer or maybe you began as something else? A lot of photographers, a lot of boudoir photographers began as wedding photographers or portrait photographers. So what is your, what is your story? Thanks, Marco. Um, <laughs> Um, so I started out shooting with a photographer who did a lot of boudoir and like model part portfolio type stuff yeah. and like just like creative things and I was doing hair and makeup for her and then I started shooting with her and then that was in Newfoundland and then from there I moved back to Ottawa and I started shooting absolutely everything so babies and weddings and boudoir and everything you know events bachelorette parties um, and then I moved mostly into families and weddings, but I always loved shooting boudoir. Mm -hmm. um, and I lived up north in like a really small town uh, in Northern Ontario for four years where the population was like 3,000 people. Mm. In and so I didn't shoot a lot of boudoir up there. <laughs> I shot like maybe three sessions in four years. Oh, you did? That's yeah. cool. I didn't know uh, that. But I always loved it. Oh, and then as soon as I got back to Ottawa, I was like, you know what? that's it i'm only i want to shoot boudoir and so i just focused on that and now um, and i was like i'm gonna shoot boudoir and then weddings um like second shooting or occasionally yeah so, so. so, cool. so yeah. why is it what is it that um uh what is that you like about boudoir is it like the the uh the the how you say the the how people react to your photos? Is it that you have maybe more room to be creative rather than you know shooting a wedding or doing a portrait? What is it that you like the most about shooting boudoir? Yeah, I like how it's it's more intimate. I like before I was into photography, I shot I worked in retail, so helping. Um, I love helping women feel confident in their bodies and their clothes and their skin. Um, so boudoir felt like a really natural, a natural thing for me, you know, to be working intimately with women and helping them feel confident yeah. and comfortable. But then also just as like a creative outlet, um, not necessarily shooting boudoir for my client, but shooting boudoir or like nude art for me, um, it was a great creative outlet for me. So you, uh, selfies, you, you, you mean, or? No, just like having somebody who would come and model for me ah, I see. Um, yeah just as a creative expression mm -hmm. not necessarily for boudoir yeah and and you mentioned um uh, this this thing with you know feeling uh, make making feel woman you know better special woman empowerment but i also have seen that you have shot uh some of your shoots are for with men that's true yeah so, and so how is that tell me about that because uh I, I don't know. Are they more difficult to pose? Uh, what is the experience you have had with uh, shooting men? Yeah. Okay. So personally, I relate to women, obviously, right? So that's like the easiest thing for me to do. But um, Makes sense. with shooting men, um, a lot of my experience shooting men comes from shooting weddings and shooting second shooting weddings. I would always be shooting the groomsmen and the, the groom. Mm-hmm. And I loved working like really intimately, like pulling the men out of their shell, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. uh, in front of my camera. And so I bring that with me whenever I'm shooting men mm -hmm. in a setting um, to kind of 
help. Because yeah, yeah. everybody wants to feel like seen and heard and, and you know, yeah, just like witnessed oh. in their, who they are, you know? Um, so I love shooting men. I, think I don't get to do it as much, I think but I love shooting men. I think your men's boudoir is really freaking amazing. It's really, <laughs> really good. I love it. <laughs> but but is it i mean i, I i've never shot uh, men um but is it more difficult to i i will i feel like it's more difficult to pose a guy than to pose a girl because in a, in a girl pro, you know i focus on their uh, their curves and yeah. you know their bodies are more curvaceous than a guy but in a guy right. What is your focus? Is it the expression? Is it more their bodies? How how you pose them? Because it's for me, it's like I don't know. I I will find very difficult to to shoot guys. I mean, yeah. not because I don't want to, but because you know, of the the posing probably is more complicated. I I don't know. I have no idea. Is it? Yeah. Um. A lot of times when I'm shooting men, I'm not getting a full session with them. Mm. Right. So. Um, I've shot two full men sessions mm -hmm. and it was great because you get that like whole amount of time to like ease into it and like really like pull them out just like you do with women, you know, mm -hmm. except with women, you have all of these references that you've already seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Women look like with mm -hmm. So with men, it's more, um, more like chatting with them and like getting to know them and like just kind of hanging out and I'm shooting them in more of like a intimate storytelling way mm. than I am with women because I have all those references of women. Pop your boobs, pop your butt, arch your back, all of these things. I don't have those things in my mind with men. That's true. So it's, it's more, I go into more of a story. That makes sense. Yeah. And your shoots are really like with men, they feel really, I feel like they feel really intimate. They look really intimate. Yeah. yeah. Plus I have like a female gaze yeah. towards men that I, can use too, right? <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and uh, that's actually a very good point because what do you think then now about males shooting uh, boudoir, right? Because uh, a lot of women are uncomfortable with that situation. Uh, what would you recommend male boudoir photographers not to do? Or to, to what, what are the things that you would recommend male boudoir photographers to connect better with uh, their clients, with uh, the people they're shooting with. Okay, so I can talk from my own experience shooting with Jean, um and what I appreciated, because I mean, I don't have like a opinion on men shooting women or vice versa, but I know like I, I love, I love your photos, Marco. I love your photos. You. I've never been shot by you, but I've been shot by Jean. And what I really appreciated was that he, um, Joel was really respectful. Um, he wasn't like, you know, the way he was looking at me wasn't uncomfortable or whatever. And you, you, you were always really, um, what's the word? Gave me lots of positive feedback, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but it was always like in a really respectful, respectful, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I think also setting the expectations are helpful. Oh, that was beautiful too. Yeah. yeah. Setting the expectations. So I always knew exactly what I was, what was happening, like what, it, yeah. what to expect. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was great. Totally. Yeah. Because um, that's, that's very important what you say about uh, being respectful because sometimes guys will say things that they may think are okay, but they're not. Right. So, yeah. so that can make the other person feel like, mm, this is not, this is kind of creepy, right? Um, yeah. I think as a male boudoir photographer, it's really important for, for you to kind of, for, for male boudoir photographers to educate themselves on what it's like to be a woman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> yeah. Um, because yeah, going into that without that empathy and just being like, whatever it is very uncomfortable yeah very uncomfortable yeah i agree i think um i don't know i don't want to say anything because it's your answer but i think it's how i think for me in that moment is yeah. i feel like how would i feel if i were in your position if the that yeah. situation was inverted that comes so, across 
So, so if you were shooting me, how would you, would I, how would I like to be treated mm -hmm. in that scene? Because I would be feeling very vulnerable. Yeah. I wouldn't be feeling comfortable yeah. and easily comfortable naked in my body. Yeah. So I would like to be kind of like probably, oh, you know, uh, maybe if she reassured me or she yeah. set the expectations right, I would be feeling so maybe that's what I think. It's kind of like that's hidden myth. No, know. that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, 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 that's great. Thank you. Um, so uh let's talk about equipment are, are you a canon nikon fuji what kind of camera i use what kind of equipment you go to Me? yeah i'm canon canon and i shoot with a 35 and an 85 uh 35 and 85 okay yeah uh and why those lenses you you feel more comfortable doing zoom maybe you have you tried zoom lenses I have I have a twenty four to seventy that I would use to shoot weddings, but I love um, I love I don't know I always use those lenses mm -hmm. with the thirty five I love the thirty five for like getting like really close and intimate and capturing all of that movement, you know because it you get a totally different like right there yeah perspective perspective mm -hmm. um, and then the eighty five I love for it's more of like a voyeuristic like mm -hmm. type of um, vibe more yeah yeah and do you normally shoot uh wide open yeah a yeah. lot of the time at like 1.8 yeah a lot of the time yeah. yeah i like that too and you yeah. as well <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah yeah you're more you're more <laughs> you're like 1.2 yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> when i shot panel you used to be like 1.2 yeah. yeah um okay so um great so let's uh Let's, let's, uh, I'm, I'm gonna ask you some questions, uh, Joao, now. Okay. Thank you, uh, Tiara. Uh, uh, um, your work is, uh, again, fantastic. I'm a fan, uh, Joao. Uh, I had a workshop, uh, you know, I attended one of your workshops, uh, and I really admire your, um, your perspective on things, you know, how you shoot people. Uh, your, in, in comparison to, to Tiara, your work is, uh, I'm, not, I'm not gonna say the opposite, but it, it gives uh, different feelings, I think. It, uh, you know, delivers different kind of emotions. It's very peaceful, it's very uh, soft, and uh, I almost feel like uh, it's like the Bob Ross of boudoir photography, kind of like, you know, very... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Bob Ross? <laughs> 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 it's very peaceful it's very very zen right very um, like, yeah like that uh, I, get it. Uh, I saw um you have a video on your website just very you know you see it you, you see that video and you're like, like oh i'm in peace you know it's very <laughs> like, nice it's, it's very nice it's very nice so um i appreciate it <laughs> yeah so, so tell me tell me about that how how you how did you develop that style? Have, have you been always like this? Or is this something that has evolved into you know, the, the style you have today? Oh, that's a good question. It's tricky to answer. <laughs> I can say that visually, I was always attracted to this. Um, it's, there is definitely, so it wasn't conscious when I started shooting boudoir, um, I was in Brazil. Um, do you guys have Brazilian soap operas in Peru? Yeah, yeah, uh, a lot. So you, you know how they are, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're really sexual. Women are always in like really tiny clothes and bikinis and like I don't know in Peru, but in Brazil, like even the the the, the open, you know, like the opening credits. credits yeah. They have like naked women, fully naked women. Yeah, really? yeah. I can show you later. I don't know in Peru if Peru <laughs> have censorship for that, but it would be different probably. But um, but in Brazil, it was common growing up with that. So I always felt like women were, yeah. Where women were always like very sexualized in Brazil. Mm -hmm. um, and I grew up like, you know, like as a kid, Playboy was the biggest magazine in Brazil. So I, I totally had access to Playboy since as a kid. But I was, it's funny because it was always shot, like it were always like this like massive celebrities, like actresses, they were respected actresses, you know, like people who were really well known. Mm -hmm. um, and they would pose and they were like, I don't know, they were shot always in a very, beautiful way mostly right because they didn't want to be portrayed in a in a really sexualized way they would always be you know like want to be portrayed more casual so this like this few photographers who were shooting for playboy at the time created this kind of like 
very unique style of shooting women in this raw element that was not forced, was very natural. So it was very attractive uh, to me growing up to see that, you know? And then I remember when Playboy started switching in Brazil to more like really posy and really sexy girls. And I remember feeling like, oh, this sucks. I don't like this, you know? Like I, I didn't like the poses. I, it, it was only in contrast that I, I could only refer myself to what I liked, you know? And then, yeah. and then, but that was, that was it. And then Playboy kind of like became this weird magazine. I didn't care about it anymore. And then when I started shooting diaries, I was looking for inner references, basically just saying, oh, what, what is it that I want to shoot? You know, and what is it all that I want to say? There was a lot of stuff in my mind, like uh, growing up in a Catholic country, you know, coming from a conservative family. I, I, I told Tara a few times that I would worry about how my father would see those photos and react to those, you know? Right. I had that feeling, right? It's probably as a... Yeah. Oh, yeah. me too. Yeah, right? Yeah, <laughs> of course. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting, right? Yeah. So my father would, like, I was always like, oh, is it, is it, is it my father like this, you know? Uh -huh. So there was a lot of like this, um, what, what is it that I want to say for my work? But also what is it that I'm curious about? Because I wasn't curious about sexuality or like, or on your face sexuality, I can find that anywhere, you know, um, on, on the internet. Mm -hmm. But I was really curious about intimacy or that sense of me. Or I mean, I think the word would be more curiosity. You know, I was really curious about this intimate world, you know, uh, which is like a male gaze. Like they were talking about right. a female gaze yeah. for intimacy. Yeah. And to me, it was like this curiosity about, or my my imagination that would project those stories, right? So, um, so I think. That's what that's what I'm attracted to. That's the reason why I shoot what I shoot is really uh, like a really an attraction. I struggle with intimacy for sure. Me, no, I always did. I always had that, and then because of that, I was always curious, you know, uh, about intimacy. And it was definitely a way of of getting that out of my head, you know, like or my mind. And trying to make sense of it. Trying to make sense of it for sure. And uh, it's funny because. People have a perception of my work that is very peaceful uh, and kind of like sometimes romantic. In my mind, when I'm shooting, I like I feel like I'm always leaving things in between, like not too romantic and not too sexy. I'm always kind of in between what's happening, and that to me creates a lot of tension when I'm doing that. So to me, uh, my work's a lot more tension than peacefulness in my mind. <laughs> Whenever I see my work, I see, yeah, I get it. I get it. you know, there's a lot more like anticipation or, you know, like, or, you know, like, or sometimes loneliness or a, a mm -hmm. desire, but it's kind of in between. It's not like I'm showing the desire, but it's like, I don't know, or, or, or maybe it's the desire from me to the, you know, to the image, right? Which is like that image of creating something that is from my imagination, you know, like mm -hmm. from that scene. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, no, no, that's very interesting. Um, because when I've seen you uh, shooting, you're very, you take your time, right? Yeah, I do. You pose, you know, somebody correctly. So normally, uh, I mean, you, you shoot for, how long, how long are your shoots normally? Like four hours? Yeah, five, five hours. That's yeah. I would say five hours, like it's a kind of like, a, even clients, they're like five hours long. Yeah. Wow. And... Yeah. So, but, but you tell them in advance, no? Because I, uh, I, I imagine, you know, five hours can be for some people a little too much um, or not. What is your experience um, with that? It's really hard for me to say what is my experience because I, to me, for me, to me, time really flies when I'm yeah. shooting. So I don't feel like that it was too long. Um, I understand that it may be long for people, but I don't get that feedback. I don't know. I shock you. How I can speak from my yeah, experience. Yeah. Sure yeah. it comes back. Um, it, I loved it. I loved every second of it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. you're not, but also you're not asking a lot of me. No, that's of, true. Of the person that you're shooting. So it's like, you know, like little things. You, it's like everything is like so perfect in camera and it's like, I'm just like laying there, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So um, it, it felt relaxing, but also you set like a, you set like a good tone and atmosphere and you know what I mean? Like, that is true. There's, so, it's not an anxious atmosphere normally. Yeah. Even though I'm very anxious, it's really strange. <laughs> I'm the most anxious person in the world, but my shoots are very calm. Yeah. No, no, I'm not <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> But it's like, um, it's funny because I think 
yeah, I think in my shoot, I, I really slow down my tone. I really talk lower. The music is normally quieter. Yeah. And, uh, and I do, I don't shoot like relentlessly. And so, you're not like, yeah. you're not like in these positions where you're like arched and doing all these like crazy things. That's you know? true. Yeah. yeah. And normally when I'm asking those things, it's for like specific amount of time. And then you're relaxing after that because I'm creating true. the next scene. Or, yeah. Know. Which a lot of, a lot of effort time goes yeah. into the scene. Yeah. Right. Of you like setting out. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you're basically just waiting, right? Yeah. And then, okay, now it's your time to work. And yeah, then... you're just like laying there. It's yeah. just like, okay, just <laughs> So I don't know. I think my feedback, the feedback is all, usually, I think people feel tired the next day. They really feel like their body, their bodies are like tired and achy. I do realize that because they're being in poses for like a long time and it's a long shoot. Um, but overall, this is any shoot. Yeah, I it's the same so. thing when I shoot people and I shoot in like two hours, but I'm asking a lot. Yeah, that's true. You know, so they're like really like it's like two hours of yoga. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that is true. And then the next day they're probably pretty sore. Uh, yeah. Sore. Yeah. 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 Do you ever hear that? Marco? Hmm? Do you ever hear that from people? Yeah, all, all the time. I, I actually tell them, um, don't expect this to be like a day in the spa, right? It, <laughs> it's going to be a, a work, a little workout. Because yeah. Yeah, yeah, like like you say, you you're asking them to move muscles, probably they don't move very often. Yeah. True. And then to hold the pose for a couple of seconds and they do that several times five hours. And yeah. then, you know, they're gonna be I mean if they if they don't if they're not used to uh working out, they're probably gonna be a little sore the next day. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sore as well too. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, that's true. So, so I think that's the only thing I hear is that you know they're probably exhausted the next day. But uh, but during the day I don't feel, I get really good feedback. I think because I set the expectations correctly, yeah. hmm. I tell them also that it's not going to be really pretty, that they're going to be very vulnerable, that you know the poses that they see on my Instagram on my website they're really beautiful and tender and intimate, but in the scene they're many times they're like really open you know and vulnerable and like you know and doesn't look as pretty so i set those expectations so in that moment the person had oh he told me he would be like that so i yeah. can trust him so i think that probably eases up the process and not mm -hmm. not feeling tense and not, not feeling kind of like afraid or like uh you know because like, i think the more you're on your mind during the shoots the longer it's gonna feel that's how i feel right so if you're like if you're if, like, if you're not in a shoot like oh my god i'm not comfortable Oh my God, this is weird. Oh my God, this is really strange. Yeah. What is he shooting right now? Mm -hmm. Then yeah. I think they, I would be like, oh, I just want to leave right now. Five right. hours, I'm going to be here for five hours. But then I think if you set up the expectations right, then they kind of like, oh, okay. Give them permission yeah. to not expect that they're going to be looking beautiful the whole yeah. time. Mm -hmm. So just be like, this is going to feel awkward. You're going to feel like you look really strange. Yeah. But I promise you it's gonna look good on my side. Right. Exactly. That's all and I so say. then it's kind of like, oh okay, so you can just relax. Yeah. You know? That, that is I think that's yeah. how that helps. That, yeah. It does, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um yeah and um Joa, you mentioned before that uh one thing that helps is to put yourself in the shoes of the person you're shooting, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of to feel them more comfortable. So have you had a shoot done for yourself, like where you are now the one who is posing and you know, have you done something like that? Or you are thinking about maybe, maybe you think that will help? <laughs> oh, yeah, once, but I never shot anything. No, I, I, yeah? I shot you a few times. Yeah, I shot you a few times. Yeah. But you shot me once in a beach base side. <laughs> but I never shot anything. <laughs> She's more shy than me right now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I feel really, really, really shy in front of the camera in a way that is hard to describe. I, you know, and I'm not very confident in my body. You know, I don't feel like, uh, you know, like so I, I, I'm self-conscious in so many ways, you know. And uh, so being shot, I mean, I trust you so much. So when, I, when she, oh, I want to take some photos of you. I thought, okay, cool. You know, because I, I, I really, really trust you. And it feels really easy to do that. Uh, and then, but we, we shot without the intention of like, even like, oh, let's share this or anything. But I told her, listen, so if you want to share, you can share, I don't mind. Cause I really like them, you know? Mm. Uh, it feels really, she, Terry is, um, like I, we shot together for the first time in Montreal this weekend. And she has this incredible, incredible skill of making people feel comfortable in a way that I've never seen. Anymore. So she shot me at camp, but like just 
like portraits and any like I hate being in front of the camera. And I remember when like you were shot for like 40 you minutes. You said you loved it. Yeah, I, yeah. I loved it. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I really, I really <laughs> love that. I mean, it's like I was like, we shot for 40 minutes, and she's like, okay. I gotta go because I need to do this. Oh, I said, oh, if you want to keep shooting, if you keep shooting, you know, like, uh, or if you want to come back and shoot more, I'm here. Because I was really enjoying. She, she, she has a way of making people feel comfortable that is like incredible, like really, really amazing. Mm -hmm. You've done shots of yourself, right? You've been yeah. from, uh, for yeah. Stacy, is that it? Yeah, Stacy. Yeah. Stacy, yeah. amazing. Yeah. I first see I can I remember. And, and yeah, and she was. Uh, I had a similar experience. Um, yeah, she she was amazing. Uh, I, I think it has to do with uh, a lot with uh, the photographer, right? How the photographer makes you feel. And uh, yeah, I was super nervous. Um, of course, all these things, you know, self-conscious, and I didn't know, you know, what is what was going to happen. But she she made it um, very uh, easy for me to to be in front of her. I have the same, I think all photographers in a way are self-conscious, you know, uh, afraid to be in front of the camera because we're so comfortable behind the camera. Um, yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, so that, that was a good experience for me. Um, it made me uh, feel, I'm not going to say the same, but similarly to what my clients feel. So I, this is one of the reasons I wanted to do it because, you know, I wanted to understand a yeah. little better. Um, and it yeah, helped a lot. Same. I understand. I understand how you feel because I felt the same. I felt like, yeah. oh, you know. It's, it's both terrifying and exciting at the same time. Yeah, yeah. and true. rewarding as well. It's really yeah. cool. It was a yeah. rewarding experience. Yeah, it was really nice. Yeah. Um, and now, uh, in terms of uh, equipment, you you like, uh, you're a Canon, right? Canon? Uh... I am. An, I, I used to be a Canon. I'm a Nikon shooter now, but maybe because we're going to be shooting together more, maybe I'll go back to Canon, you know, so we can have the same gear. I'm not, I'm not attached to my Nikon, you know, I don't feel yeah. like this is my favorite gear. I, yeah. I shoot with it and I'm okay, but I, I miss Canon. I do. I just didn't like, I, I, when I, sh when I switched to Nikon, I didn't like what Canon was offering at the time. So it was like, okay, you know, like, you know, and I needed, my work is very, very dark compared to most people's work and it's not dark in contrast it's really really the the, the amount of light in many cases are really low uh, not anymore i used to shoot a lot in like i used to close windows and very get really well controlled lighting i'm less obsessed with that no right now but at the moment at the time it was so getting darker shots a little bit brighter in the editing was a hassle uh with canon so i switched to nikon but because i don't shoot that much in that way anymore that much so i would be really happy also canon has amazing cameras nowadays so yeah i think we're probably, I'm probably gonna switch back. and uh one of the things that surprised me um when i saw you uh shooting was that you use an 85 yeah in a, in a so is that is that your your go-to lens 85 yeah yeah i would say that i'm only shooting 50s if i really have no space at all uh, mm -hmm. and in many cases I won't shoot. Like for example, if the space, sometimes I put a 50 and I say, ah, oh, no, I'm not happy with it. And I'm like, okay, let's not shoot this. And I shoot 50 when I'm shooting from above or, you know, or if it is a close up, then it works really well. But otherwise um, I'm shooting 85 all the time. Yeah, which to me is uh, crazy. Because <laughs> when I saw you shooting with an 85, I'm like, oh my, are you shooting with, what? <laughs> it is crazy. <laughs> no, yeah. But, no, yeah. So. <laughs> It's, it's crazy because in situations where I would think, no, there's no, no way I'm going to be able to make it with an 85. And then you were shooting with an 85. Um, so what is that you like the most about the 85? Is, is, is it the compression? Is it like, what, what is it? No, I think the, the compression is, is, is definitely the factor, right? The thing is not the compression in terms of like depth of field, but more the compression in terms of like how we comp like kind of creates this claustrophobic feeling in my images, you know? It's kind of like, I love, like um, my main references are movies, like in terms of like, like, like my image or like my visual reference in terms of how I compose images is like movies. And so that's why I always have like something in the scene showing or to create some references. And the thing is movies, they, I don't know what is the crop. I always try to remember. I always know and then I forget. But the crop for the movie is not like 19 by six. 
it's even shorter than that. So it's really yeah. narrow. Mm -hmm. So you can shoot at 25 millimeters in a movie, but when they're editing, they're gonna crop it so tight that it's gonna feel really compressed and intimate, right? That's why it looks so beautiful in movies. We cannot do that with the, with the photos, otherwise we're gonna have like all these really narrow photos that don't make any mm -hmm. sense. But the 85 helps me create that. It really compresses everything. So kind of like, you know, like I'm always somehow, somehow cropping yeah. the top of the head, you know, or mm. like half of the body. So it gives this compressed feeling. And also the way it shows the environment is very, it's very limited. So it just shows bits of the environment. While for example, if you shoot with a 50 or a mm -hmm. 35, it doesn't matter how close you get to the subject, you still have a lot of information from, mm -hmm. the, uh, from the environment, you know? Yeah. So that, that's probably the reason why I, I shoot with the 85, yeah. And uh, it really create, also helps me create layers, which is the, that where it's right. like, mm -hmm. yeah. So those layers really create that kind of like sense of like, I don't know, seeing someone from. Yeah. From pop, yeah. Right. Yeah. It gives uh, another dimension to the photo, something yeah. that should be two dimensional, you know, when you put layers and create yeah. a sense of space. Totally. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Which is nice. Yeah. Um, Cool. So uh, I know you mostly shoot on location. Do you have a studio at all or not? No, I never had a studio. It's, it's, it's a hassle to find location, you know? Yeah. Uh, we've, we've been talking about this now that we're going to be shooting together. Tara always had a studio. Um, she, she, she's probably going to be using her space for shoots mm -hmm. as well. So we don't know how it's going to be when we're shooting together, if we're gonna be shooting here or if we're gonna rent in, rent in mm -hmm. space. Uh, I shot often, like clients, I shot clients in their houses and it, it worked out. Many like, people who can afford a shoot, normally they live in a nice space. They, mm -hmm. they you know they, they live in a, a space that is, can be shot at, you know? Yeah. I don't think they want to, but normally it can be shot at. It will work for a photo shoot. So I don't know how it's gonna work. How do you think uh, it's gonna work for us? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll make a yeah. No, so this is actually a good segue to uh, to explain, you know, your the project you're working on and uh, the things that you have planned and you know what is because I know you moved from Vancouver to Ottawa. Yeah. Uh, is how do you pronounce it? O Ottawa. 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 Okay. So you're now uh, there. So um, which is great. I mean that you guys are now uh, together. So tell us. Tell us about the, your projects and you know the things that you have planned together. Do you want to start? No. You're better. You're better <laughs> at saying things. <laughs> You're more direct than me. <laughs> okay. Oh, I, okay. I don't know. Tell. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. No, you do it. No, you do it. <laughs> <laughs> um. So after camp last year, Tara and I became you know, closer friends, and uh, we used to talk a lot about collaborating work you know and um we used to do a lot of like work hangouts and talk about you know having projects together i am a huge fan of tiara's work you know um and we share many i would say many many similar views on creativity and we, although we have different creative processes mm -hmm. uh, we do have a feel like an intent and goal which are very similar to what we're, we're, we're where we want to get you know um and i'm uh, and, and i think there is a mutual admiration for like for each other's work yeah um uh, so i'm a huge fan of her process and how she sees and how she expresses herself and um and then we we were talking for a long time about collaborating but logistically it was not possible i had a plan already to move to ottawa but you know it was like it was just a long process a really long process to move here and um so uh recently we started like thinking okay since i'm moving to auto let's let's like we started actually we started doing little things together which is like uh we wanted to do offer mentorships together about creativity um because we're very passionate about that you know like creative process and understanding the reasons behind our work what is it yeah. that motivates people to shoot you know and uh, the questions you're asking why are you shooting boudoir and you know like this uh, um, so we so we created a mentorship together. Yeah. Uh, but we didn't put a lot of work in that because it's just been crazy with COVID and moving. And so we didn't. You know, it was everything was crazy. Right? Mm -hmm. So and then we were invited to speak at an online conference called. Um, yeah, I saw that. Yep. You saw it? I, I I didn't attend, but I saw you know that you guys were yeah. posting about it. Yeah. 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 
to talk about that subject with like the power of references or how yeah. creativity is related to references and how we transform those references and where they come from. And we did it last week when I moved here. Yeah. Yeah. I moved here like the, the day the, after the day after. Yeah. Mm. And it was really, really cool. You know, yeah. it was really fun. It was really nice to do this together. Yeah. And, um, and then since a little bit before we started, okay, how, like we should like, do we want to shoot together? You know, we want to do all these things because originally we're, it was like, okay, we're, we're going to do workshops, mentorships, conferences. And we started talking about shooting together because we, we, we're so similar in so many ways, right? Yeah. The worst is like, we're not very good at, how can I say that? <laughs> Running our businesses or <laughs> alone? You know, we're both like, we're both really like good at creating and shooting and, mm -hmm. and yeah. feeling creative about our work. But then when it comes to, to managing. Run, managing the business yeah. and running it yeah. and selling and branding, we're, we're not excited to do that alone. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we talked about it and felt like, wow, this could be amazing because we can really help each other. We understand each other. So it's not, we won't be feeling judged or, mm -hmm. or I don't know, or called out, you know, because we're, <laughs> we're kind of like struggling with something. Yeah. And um, so, you know, Tyler, Tyler Martin. Then yeah. The, yeah. Tyler so, is amazing. He's freaking. He's him. great. Yeah, he's great. He's great. He's really cool. And um, so he's been he's been helping us for, uh, to set up this new business. So basically, what we're gonna do is all our creative work will continue separate. You know, so we're still gonna have like Trongetti photography and Terra Brows photography, and mostly it's gonna be related to creative work or creative expression. It doesn't need to be boudoir. It can be whatever it is. Yeah. We're gonna still like separate our work creatively, but yeah. as a business, boudoir is a business. Boudoir is a business. We're gonna like yeah, come together. Come together, yeah. yeah. Cool. <laughs> so we're gonna sell shoots uh, like couples and you know uh, men, women, whatever yeah. together. Uh, it's gonna call that uh, Cosmia photography. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, that's great. That's yeah. great. Yeah, so exciting. Yeah. So exciting. So. Uh, <clears throat> when is this going to happen? Uh, are you guys doing it already or? You're right now we're just like working on building a collection of work together. Yeah. And then putting it all together. So we're working on it. Okay. Yeah. We're yeah. the process of trying to book as, as many creative shoots as we can right yeah. now, you know, together to see how, how, how we work together. We yeah. did our first one last weekend. It was really cool. Uh, but there's a lot of like, you know, like, how we're gonna edit together, uh -huh. you know? like and yeah. uh, you know, yeah. and branding so, logo. So when you shoot, you shoot together. Is both of you shooting or? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, wow. Okay. That's I would love to see the results. I would love. Yeah. Us too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna. We're gonna. We'll launch and it'll all be there. Yeah. That would yeah. be like many probably changes, even in the way I shoot or perceive shooting yeah. women and men, you know, and uh, there will be a lot of it, like, you know, adjustments. And that's really, really cool. I'm really freaking excited about it because yeah. it's such a change in the way I'm, you know, like been doing things in such a kind of like, you too, right? And so yeah, it's kind of sure. like always the same way. Yeah, like the shoot on when it was Saturday or whatever. <clears throat> How to like work around each other and and direct and then use your direction to kind of with my energy or yeah, whatever, right? True. Like, or my energy, but then with your like yeah. way of shooting, you know? That, that was really, yeah, it was really, really cool. fun. That's, it was really fun, yeah. And, and you guys plan, you mentioned uh, mentorships. <clears throat> uh, are you planning to do, you know, workshops or things like that in the, in the future? Yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah. yeah, we're excited about it. Yeah, as soon as we can. As soon as you can do a workshop and have like a bunch of people in an enclosed space for a workshop right well. yeah so probably next year yeah probably i don't know that depends on how things reopen here right canada is better than the u.s mm -hmm. so yeah, they're reopening they're like like in bc where i used to live things are pretty much open i could do a workshop there right now you know um but in ontario there's a, a stage before so in bc there's stage four in Ontario, there's stage three. three. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we're, yeah, so soon, hopefully soon. Like, uh, but in the meantime, mentorships, it's really exciting to like work with people one-on-one -on -one to help them develop their identity and, and understand why they shoot the way they shoot and what they want to shoot and what, you know, moves and inspires them and yeah. speaks to them. 
it is it is really something that we're passionate about. Mm -hmm. I think mentorships are workshops are amazing, right? But it's always about the photographer. Mm -hmm. So it's like someone goes there to learn something about you and how you shoot, how you see lighting, you know. And um, but then mentorships are really about the mentory, you know? uh, which is like what what is it that you need and how 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 do you get there and you know and how do, can we assist you to get there you know so that process is really fascinating i've done it in the past oh sorry yeah. you're gonna say something no just like taking people from okay i want to shoot boudoir so i'm gonna look up a million boudoir photos mm -hmm. and i'm gonna try to shoot that you know from there to i want to shoot intimacy or tell a story or whatever and work from like an internal place versus a external yeah place mm -hmm. you know? yeah that is exactly what it is yeah yeah like for example and should we shoot only two hours or can i shoot for five hours you know because there are all these re rules and regulations in the industry that we should adjust to and that kind of like limitates how how we create and how and then like assisting people on okay what is it that you need and how, like, can you create in two hours or do you need four? You know, can yeah. you, uh, do you really want to shoot like sexy or what is it that you try to say with your work? You know, maybe, maybe you need something more intimate or maybe you're looking for something that is, you know, how to, or where, you, where, where is this urge to shoot nude or nakedness where sex, sexuality come from so you can understand what you try to do. You know? So I think that's the process. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's great. Uh, and you guys have a, a website that you have uh, for your work now, or you still in the works? It's all in the works. All in the works. Yeah. works. Okay. Well, whenever it's ready, let me know, and uh, I'll I'll leave the, the links to your websites, and you know, for every anybody that is watching, um, I think you know you you guys are amazing, and anybody will be uh, happy and will benefit from. Uh, you know, a mentorship or a workshop with you guys. I, I, I would like to attend. I would like to attend one of your That would be great. Man. Your work is yes. amazing. Oh my gosh. You're so still, good. Man. The first so good. tutorial that you put on Do More was mm. like, oh my gosh. I saw that and I was like, oh my gosh. Which oh, one was that? Amazing. It was talking about like, um, yeah, you're, you're talking about how you get inspiration from movies and then like your color palette. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was so cool because really cool. I was looking at it things in such a different way that I didn't. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And everybody's so different, you know. Um, but yeah, in, in their own way, right? And uh, your 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 work is uh, both of you it's amazing, fantastic, really, really nice. So um, so thank you very much for the interview. Uh, I'm gonna leave the links in in the description, and you know, for people to visit your websites and whenever you have you know, your, your new website or your workshops, let me know and I will uh, make sure everybody knows where to find you. That's cool. Thanks Thank you so much, Marco. Really appreciate it. It was really fun chatting with you. Very nice. And hopefully we can see each other sometime soon, somewhere. <laughs> yeah. 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 It'll, like, happen. <laughs> it'll happen. It'll happen. Right, I know, I hope, I hope so. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you very much. Take okay, care. Thanks, Marco. Okay. Bye. Okay,